Sunday night at Wrigley Field, the 89th and final home game for the Cubs at Wrigley for the entire 2016 season. It is a chilly night at the end of October. The Cleveland Indians up three games to one over the Chicago Cubs. Now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody I'm Joe Buck the Hall of Famer John Smoltz is coming right up well you know what's on the line tonight does it end here in Chicago at Wrigley Field the Cleveland Indians get a chance to celebrate their first world championship since 1948 or do the Cubs behind their ace John Lester force this series back to Cleveland Ohio it's going to be a fun night tonight on Fox and welcome in John and I think so far what's been very evident with all the pressure of these home at bats in front of a raucous crowd at Wrigley Field, some of these young guys for the Chicago Cubs have been a bit overwhelmed. They got to calm it down a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. And what you you got to tell yourself what we haven't done. You got to remember what we can do. And they can hit. They can run. They can play defense. And oh, by the way, they have their best pitcher on the mound. So the Cubs are going to have to get back to the basics. They're going to have to get this crowd into it. They only scored two runs here at home for John Lester. You see the numbers offensively. John Lester has to control the other team. And what the offense for the the Cubs has to do is get the lead. They got to win the five innings. It sounds like a broken record, but the Chicago Cubs can flip the script really quickly. Lester, Arietta, Hendricks. Okay, let's talk about the Cleveland Indians. Now, this is a team that's firing on all cylinders, and tonight they've got Trevor Bauer going on short rest. We'll see a lot of the bullpen. Terry Francona is going for the throat tonight. It should be a quick hook night for the starter. Yeah, and that's what the Chicago Cubs are up against. That's why if it's close in the fifth or a lead for Cleveland, he's turning it over possibly to his closer. Cleveland playing with house money. I hate that term, but they're going to run like crazy if they get on base. Cleveland's got all the momentum, and I think for Bauer, keep him in the game and then let Francona do the rest. Off we go. It's game five of the World Series tonight on Fox. Oh, we get and we're down we go the Indians stand on the brink of their first World Series championship in 68 years while Cubs ace John Lester carries the burden of 108 years of hopes and dreams will history be made tonight
Double One. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. Well, the wind is blowing in, maybe left to right just a bit. It's 51. It feels a heck of a lot colder than that. It's going to get more chilly as we go. That's what the scarecrow would say in the Wizard of Oz. I think it's going to get colder before it gets warmer or something along those lines. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Cleveland Indians. Fifth game, fifth different lineup. Rajay Davis, Jason Kipnis, and Francisco Lindor. In the middle, Mike Napoli, Carlos Santana, who's back and left, and Jose Ramirez. Show the hair, Jose. He's at third. Back end of it, Brandon Geyer, Roberto Perez, and Trevor Bauer. Lacerated pinky finger and all, ready to swing the bat and do what he can. On the mound, in the middle of all this defensive action is Lester. He's got Zobrist in left. Dexter Fowler in center, Jason Hayward in right. Around the infield, Chris Bryant, Addison Russell, Javier Baez, and Anthony Rizzo. David Ross does the catching, and that's the usual combination. Ross and Lester, who has been outstanding since the All-Star break. He's lost only twice. One of those losses coming in game number one when he was matched up against Corey Kluber. Went five and two-thirds, allowed three runs on six hits, but it's all on him now for the Chicago Cubs and these fans that are packed into Wrigley to try to get this series back to Ohio. Yeah, he's been really good and really good at home. And I think you're going to see a subtle adjustment just based on the last game. I would think that John Lester is going to pound some fastballs in. The wind's blowing in from left. It'll carry a little bit to right. And look for him to pound more strike once. He didn't do that as well as he would have liked to in the last game. And certainly keep the guys who can run off the bases. That would include Rajay Davis. Who's ready to go. And so is John Lester. Strike one. John Lester went 12 of 26 as far as first pitch strikes in game number one and Rajay Davis likes to get on and start the engines he stole 43 during the regular season problem is he hasn't been getting on one for 11 in this series a pop up right side and will it stay in play no, 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 no. the answer is no and Jason Hayward had to slide around one of the Indians either pitchers or part of their personnel down in the Cleveland bullpen as that ball was coming down. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised whoever that is. Does Macho get out of the way and the other guy doesn't get out of the way either. That's they're not even strange. watching. Here's a no two pitch Rajay Davis fouls it back. Lester was trying to get his sinker. He actually threw a lot of sinkers in Cleveland, partly due to maybe not feeling really good with the four seamer and in. He's already pounded in Davis a lot more than he did. Ball one. You know, the goal for any pitcher when you're facing elimination. You want to be as sharp as you can be. You don't have to pitch perfect. That get that out of your mind. Don't try to pitch perfect because then you'll make more mistakes. But you want easy outs, easy counts, and less stressful situation if you can avoid them. A ball and two strikes on Rajay Davis. Two and two. For coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune to Fox Deportes. Two quick strikes on Davis now at 2 2 count. Lester. Got it. Well, it goes to the two seamer away. Just a great pitch after pounding him in with fastballs and cutters. First out of a guy who can run. A good start for Lester.
Number two hitter is Jason Kipnis, who hit a three run shot here last night over the wall and right. Strike one. And when he did it, the first visiting player to Homer here at Wrigley in a World Series with a three run shot since Babe Ruth back in 1932. Here's the 0 1 from Lester. Nothing in two. There, trying to start it in against Kipnis. Actually, has real good late action. A good start. John Lester has pitched in a couple of elimination games, and his team has gone 0-2 in those games. Number three hitter is Lindor. Takes a strike. So Lester trying to come through for the Cubs. Didn't do it for the Red Sox. Back in 08 against Tampa Bay. But he looks on tonight, at least in this first inning. Pounding strikes. That's what he needed to do and getting inside to Lindor. Lindor getting two hits off him. In the first game. Last time Lester had a shot at an elimination game, he pitched for Oakland at Kansas City when he was traded in 2014 in the wild card game. He has a personal record of all one. His teams are 0 2. Tonight, trying to make a statement here in the first inning. His team down three games to one. Pass, the simple, secure way to pay. Joe Madden told us before tonight's game, I have never wanted to see a game seven so badly in my life. Well, his team needs to come up with two wins to give the Cubs a chance 
in this series tonight after a half no score. The Cubs coming up. Here's their lineup. Top three Fowler, Bryant, and Rizzo. In the middle, Ben Zobrist, Addison Russell back in the number five spot. And Jason Hayward back to back starts. Then it's Javier Baez, who's had a tough time in this series. Two for 17. David Ross, John Lester. Hitless this postseason, and here is Trevor Bauer, the 25-year-old right-hander. Eccentric, a little different, pitching on three days rest. Had plenty of rest going into that game two start, which he lost on Wednesday. 5-1 was the final. Ball one to Fowler. It's something that might help him be less powerful with his fastball and have more command and finesse on three days rest. Insert. Fowler went deep last night. His only RBI of this World Series. Four hits. Two and one. Well, here's the unorthodox style. You don't see this typically before a start where he's outside the dugout getting ready before a big World Series start. And then right before he faces the Cubs, this is what he does every single time. Pro hops and throws it as hard as he can. But nobody questions the stuff he has. It's whether or not his game plan fits what the Indians are asking him to do and their catcher in Perez. They don't want him shaking off too much. Fowler steps out, gets back in. Cubs are hitting just 204 with 39 strikeouts in this World Series through four games. That strike three on the inside corner. That pitch had good movement, life to it, and Fowler heads back to the dugout. Well, with the angle that he delivers the ball, the unorthodox way that he throws almost it seems like from his hip, that's actually a four seamer that moves. Most of those pitches you would think are two seamers. But because he has changed his arm slot and arm angle when he gets ready to pitch, he's got more lateral movement on that four seam fastball with the 12 to 6 curveball that he also has in an arsenal. Cubs need to get Chris Bryant going. The time's running out. One for 14 in this World Series. No RBIs hitting 071. And the message I would give if there's a teammate that maybe not playing is take your walks if you're the Cubs. Take them. See, you expand the zone and you want to make something happen via the hits, you'll get something going if you just take the walks that the Indian pitchers are giving you. That has been a theme for the Cubs so far in this series, not taking the walks. Game two, eight walks, win. That's popped up right side. It will get out of play for strike two. Last night it was David Ross who said at times we're having a hard time slowing the moment down the moment the atmosphere of us wanting to do so much for these fans. I really think that's where it comes from. This place is electric and the Cubs have been pressing and now back to back strikeouts for Trevor Bauer. And Bryant didn't like the call two out. Well, they've been pounding curveballs against Bryant. And this one again, see that break from top to bottom? That one split the plate. Bryant's going to think that's low. That's what they've been doing to both him, Baez, Russell. Rizzo will try and break the string. Five batters have stepped to the plate in game five, and all five have struck out. I'm sure, we're going to find out if that's a uh, World Series record if they strike out the side both. Stats on everyone. With Aaron Charlton's in the booth for him. The guys and gals at Stats Inc. Another strike. Well, for the innings, good sign. That curveball didn't come until about the third inning in his previous start. So you can already see looking, he's more in rhythm on three days rest early in the first inning than he was in the game in Cleveland. So Mickey Calloway, pitching coach, who's done such a good job with. This staff for Terry Francona. There's so much to say about Francona. I know we went into some of it last night. Trying to win his third world championship. Two and one on Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, talking with him. Still trying to make progress with Bowers. Still trying to get him to come closer to halfway. He expressed to us last year at one point he threw 80 consecutive days off the mound. That just doesn't happen. But he's a unique pitcher. Foul. And out on 
for Sheffield. Well, that's the side of the field where the wind won't affect it as much. It's going to be blowing in from center to left center. And he knows as soon as he hits it, too much hook. In the air to left, and that will cut to Santana. And Carlos Santana, who makes his second career start in left field, loves it. No base runners yet. After one at Wrigley in game five. Home plate umpire tonight is Tony Randazzo. Joe West is at first base. Sam Holbrook at second. Chris Guccione over at third and left. It's John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, and Marvin Hudson in right. That's on the inside corner. That's 11 strikes in 14 pitches from John Lester. Larry Vanover is the umpire back in New York. He'll watch the replays. Here's a little flare into. Shallow right center out behind the second base position one out. Well, you can learn a lot by watching BP and earlier today balls to the left field. The hitters couldn't drive them out of here any depth or any height but to right Napoli was putting on a show fading some over to right center and you can tell the theme hey. of Lester getting in on right handers is going to be important because he's going to want them to actually pull the ball in the air and not hit the slicers to the right side you weren't even looking at your monitor when we flashed up that last graphic I wasn't what did it say? big swing and a miss by Carlos Santana the last NL pitcher to strike out the first three batters in a World Series game there right there look read oh. you in game five against the Yankees Can we keep that up there for a while that was in Atlanta before the Yankees won it in game six oh. Here's a pop up right side foul ball will it stay in play Ross is there and he gets an assist as 
Alex Rizzo puts it away. Two out. Great job. Never assume anything. Right there. See that camera? That probably gave him a little bit of a reach. And here comes his partner in crime. The old tip drill. If only Jim Harbaugh were here to see that. Oh, oh there he is. Oh, there he is. How about that? Two out, nobody on, and Jose Ramirez steps in. Strike one. Yeah. Ramirez. Waits for the 0 1. And hits one a ton into left. Back at the wall, it is good. And the Indians strike first in game number five here in the second. When you ask Terry Francona about Jose Ramirez, he says he's just made himself a great hitter. And after a terrific regular season, he has stayed hot in the postseason. Indians up 1-0 in the second. You're right about that, making himself a great player. He has been outstanding all year. Doesn't matter what side of the plate. Ball one inside to Brandon Geyer. Terry Francona moving these pieces all over this order. Fifth different lineup that he's used through five games. And out of that number six spot, Ramirez goes deep. One ball, one strike on Geyer. We showed you the umpires, and everyone associated with baseball extend our condolences to the family of retired umpire Mark Johnson, who passed away on Wednesday. Tonight's umpiring crew personally conveys their condolences to Mark's wife. Lelia. So they are thinking of him tonight. The man in blue. And Brandon Geyer will try to follow that blast by Jose Ramirez. Just outside, and the count goes to three and one. I don't think Ramirez could have hit that ball any harder. It was perfect execution. You almost feel like he was looking for it because he. John Lester threw it exactly where David Ross wanted it. That's hard hit. Bryant, a dive, a throw, a dig. Got it. What a play. And Geyer says, let's check and make sure Rizzo's foot was on the bag. What a play on both ends. Three play on the screen. Bryant, you see the ball down the line. Great extension. Taller third baseman gets up and his teammate bails him out. Great pick. As of now, wow, the Indians are not going to challenge. And they've already said they're not going to challenge it. But it looks like Rizzo's foot's off the bag. Does it get back? We'll look at it again. But here's the home run. Jose Ramirez has gone deep. That's his first of the postseason, and the Indians strike first in game five.
for Jose Ramirez his first home run away from progressive field since the 23rd of May. It's 235 at bats ago and it comes in game five of the World Series in the second to give Cleveland a one to nothing lead and Ben Zobrist is first up. We'll give you another look at that play at first base. It's close as to whether Rizzo got his foot back on the bag. Here's Zobrist into right. And that will curl to the right fielder, Geyer, one out. You could hear somebody in the dugout tell Terry Francona, look at the big replay board to see if you want to challenge it. The big replay board did not show this angle. The question is, does the foot of Rizzo get back on the bag before the right foot of Geyer? The call was out. And as we've learned so far this postseason, John, unless it is clear and concise, they're not going to overturn it. Here's a strike into Addison Russell. Yeah, being so early, up one nothing, and being so close, I don't think it was worth losing a challenge uh, for Terry Francona. One ball, one strike. Joe Madden said Addison Russell is a big confidence guy, which means he's telling Addison Russell, "I have confidence in you to hit the number five spot." He hasn't been in this spot since early on in the postseason. Because yeah, Joe Madden's up, up. looking for something, Black some Hill's spark in this right lineup. Come on. He's got Russell back behind Zobrist. Check swing. Two and two. And he, do, he doesn't jump out like that where he swung a lot of those pitches. And you can hear Joe Madden say, come on, right field corner, double. He wants him to stay on the ball and go the other way and then react in. The curveball and breaking ball have just absolutely given Russell a lot of fits. Full count. And the other thing that's given the Cubs fits is this count. They have not won enough of these counts. Three and two. Let's just see if they can command the strike zone and be as calm as possible and not expand it on a three two count. That's down the left field line, headed for the seats foul. Last night was the first time since game five of the division series with the Washington Nationals. The team that scored first lost. Cubs scored first last night. They lost the ball game. Here's one up the middle. Russell's on with one out. That's a good sign. 3 2 curveball, and he stays on it. See how he stays on it and goes right up the middle. Even though he might have been a little fooled, he keeps his hands back and doesn't try to do too much. If you try to flat out pull that ball, that's where you're going to miss it or you're going to make an out rolling it over to the third baseman. Those are the kind of at bats in a baseball game, one at a time, pass the baton down, let the next guy do his job. That's the only way you get back for the Chicago Cubs offensively in this series. Back to back starts for Jason Hayward. Coming off his first multi hit game since September 26th. He would like to reward Joe Matt for going back to him in the lineup last night because of how good he is defensively out in right. John Lackey on the mound and got a couple of hits, so he's back in there tonight. Batting in the sixth spot. And again, I gotta re echo this is not a fun position for Jason Hayward as the year did not go the way he wanted. You get benched, your pride takes a hit. He's handled it from what we can see as good as possible. He comes in, pinch hits, plays the defense, but that pinch hit line drive to center, and now he's been swinging the bat a little bit better. 2 0 pitch. Those are the pitches, though, that you got a keyhole. You got to, you got to sell out at some point in one area when you're having the at bat in your favor at 2-0. Just took it for a strike. It's two and one. Right side foul. Two and two. Now with Baez on deck, and 
remember David Ross does the catching for Lester so he's in the number eight spot. the strike zone the one that got Fowler against Hayward see when he stays on top instead of I call it throws a shot put he has the capability of throwing fastballs that can do what Kluber did but when he gets out of whack and rushes he rides the ball up he's a high fastball curveball guy but when he gets out of rhythm he's higher than high and it doesn't make it look good for Baez I would be on the attack first pitch and then be cautious once they get strike one on you. Ball one inside. What's happening is he's he's missing the first pitch and then once he gets a strike on him they start expanding the zone and don't even come close to throwing him another strike. And unfortunately he's helping him out two for 17 in this World Series. There's a strike. Well, this is what they've been doing to him. And the one thing that I can tell you from being on the mound, when the hitter gives you these scenarios and you expand the zone and you don't swing at strikes, you're not going to get many more. Once you get a strike on this guy, you just see how far he's willing to fish. And you go higher than high, lower than low. It's a perfect example. It almost speeds his mind up when he gets a strike. Instead of trusting that he doesn't going to see another strike, it's almost like if you could put the take sign on once Baez gets a strike, which you know they're not going to do, he would be better served to get the count back in his favor. But lately, he's just hoping they make a mistake in the middle of the zone because he's already committed. He goes after that pitch. In the dirt and a strikeout on another bad ball way out of the strike zone. And that's the first swinging strike three that Trevor Bauer has picked up. Four strikeouts and after two in game five, one to nothing. Indians on top.
more 2016 J.D. Power Defendability Awards than any other brand. The Cleveland Indians have won 15 straight when they've hit a home run, including 9-0 in the postseason. And that goes back to how good their pitching's been. The Indians come into this game with a group ERA of 1.68. This postseason, that's the fourth lowest ever in the history of the postseason. Minimum seven games, and they've done it against Boston, Toronto, and now the Cubs. Three good hitting teams, typically. It'd be 1.3 without ba without Bauer. Bauer is the only one that's had some hiccups. One ball, one strike on Roberto Perez. Against Lester, went one for three with a home run in game one. Had a home run later in the night. Ball two. It's just the Indians have been amazing on their opportu opportunities. I mean, when they've squared some balls up, it's with the wind blowing in. And they have made this park look small with the wind blowing in. Two and two. Coming to get it. And in foul ground has a one out. With a pitcher Trevor Bauer coming up. You look at what's going on with this Indians pitching. Five shutouts in 12 games. And obviously there are more opportunities, more rounds in the postseason now. Divisional play starting in 1969. But that's the first team in postseason history to throw five shutouts. Meanwhile you look at what the starters and relievers have done and the ERA almost identical and the innings pitched not too far away between the starters and relievers for Terry Francona. Strike one on Trevor Bauer. Yeah they've been outstanding both sets of it starters and relievers. If I'm Trevor Bauer I don't even swing. He's got that pinky issue. Don't even mess with it. Ten stitches in the right pinky. It's cold. All you got to do is get jammed. Here's a no two pitch. Ball one. Matter of fact, I, there's times I've been up there. I've told the umpire, seriously, don't mess around. Get me out of here. Anything close, call a strike. And the catcher looks at me like I'm baiting him, like I'm setting him up for a pitch down the middle. Two and two. Lester's yelling at himself. I had a little chip fracture and I, I didn't want to swing. I didn't want to do anything. And there were two starts I did. 2 2 pitch. That is a foul ball, and Joe West was almost hit by it and then gave the foul call. Sandy Alomar is saying, hey, wait a minute. That looks fair. Let's give it a look. It went right between Joe's legs. This ball was really close to being fair. I think he got the call right. Yeah. Terry Francona went out to talk to the home plate umpire. That's Tony Randazzo. And he goes down to Joe West to make sure. Joe West, the old Elon College quarterback. A shake of the head from Terry Francona, but I think that replay showed that it was the right call. So forget about Trevor Bauer not being able to swing the bat. We keep acting like people know what we're talking about. Had was fixing his drone on the Friday before the ALCS started. One of the propellers started, cut his pinky on his pitching hand. It required 10 stitches. He could only throw 21 pitches in his game three start. Had to come out. Here is Hayward. Made the catch. And even Bauer has 
tries to smile at that. He climbed the wall and had to reach behind him. Two out. Yeah, he was prepared to go on the stands. You see him reach up and come back and get it. Well, the Cubs, widely known for their great defense, they've had some hiccups the last couple games. And Bauer giving him the, his approval. Rajay Davis now struck out his first time. Breaking ball for a strike. Solo home runs. Pitchers don't mind giving up solo home runs. You just don't want to get chaos on the bases if you're John Lester. Especially if you're John Lester. There's issues with throwing the first. Chris Bazio is pitching coach. Here's the 0-2 to Davis. Ball one. Tried to backdoor a cutter right there, and he just got out in front of himself. Lester on only a couple pitches has been a little frustrated. Stay back and trust it. Well, the defense hurt the Cubs last night. Chris Bryant committing two throwing errors in the same inning. Coming in the second, a two run second, where the Indians entered trailing one to nothing and left the frame up two to one. Pretty much we're in control the rest of the way. One at seven to two. Here's one to Baez. Bryant's already made a good play in this game tonight. A good play by Rizzo. Actually two by the first baseman. Now this by Jason Hayward. Almost went too far. One nothing Cleveland. Well, David Ross got an assist earlier. We flash back 1980 game six second to last out Frank White hit it Bob Boone deflected 
And Pete Rose was there to grab it for the out. Second inning tonight in game five. David Ross was there, so was Rizzo. And part of the good defense tonight for the Chicago Cubs, who trail one to nothing, and Ross leads it off. Cubs are hoping to extend this World Series to a game six in Cleveland, and David Ross hoping to extend his career to a game six in Cleveland. He's finished after the 2016 season at the age of 39. Concussions, one of the reasons why, probably the biggest. He can still play. Loved on this team. Loved in the seats. In the hole here, one and two. Well, for Bauer and the Indians, they've got to be pleased. He's throwing strikes. He's got his finesse pitches working. He won't have to be in there very long if they have a one or two run lead. They'll go right to the pen as soon as Terry Francona thinks his advantage with the guys he has down there can take the rest. Well, keep this in mind. Cody Allen, the closer, could come on as soon as the fifth. Left side, this is Lindor with plenty of time and plenty of arm. And I didn't misspeak. We talked to Terry Francona before the game, and he said, well, we could flip-flop and give the bulk of the work to Cody Allen. He'll be ready early. I said, well, how early is early? Like end of the sixth? He said, no, fifth. So that's at least in his mind. Who knows if that comes to pass, but between Allen Shaw and Andrew Miller who is available tonight those big arms will be seen out of the bullpen as the Indians try to end it here in Chicago and yeah, make no mistake even Terry Francona when talking to him about the scenarios he said look we can't do this in the regular season everyone's getting all excited all the people who think this is the way you manage games in the regular season there's no way I could use my pen that way matter of fact if we were well equipped and, and healthy in our starting rotation, it would be a different story. Lester strikes out, and that is five strikeouts for Trevor Bauer. And <laughs> Terry Francona, who, as we showed you, has a great record in elimination games lost only one World Series game while he's gone 11 and one is I think he's staring at the Hall of Fame I mean he's already won two world championships he goes to Cooperstown with another automatically and may even go in with two for the job he did with the Boston Red Sox yeah absolutely and he's not thinking about that but you know that if he gets his third in the two places where you eliminate a long time where Boston had won, now Cleveland hasn't won. 2-0 to Fowler. They changed up on him. And Fowler way out in front. Trevor Bauer much better tonight than game two. He's in much better rhythm. And even that pitch right there, not giving in to the count. Showing finesse. 2-1. That is foul down the line. You know, you think about it, it just sometimes, it, 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 for the Chicago Cubs, it really is this simple. You really believe you can win three games in a row with the pitchers you're going to run out there, but you're going to need a little help from your offense. They did it 18 times this year, win three games at least in a row. They're going to have to string together better at bats. No doubt. I mean, the top half of this lineup's got to cover, got to cover the bottom half. They've got to be better than what the bottom half is not doing. Here's a 3-2. High fly ball into right. Geyer to his right. Trevor Bauer in charge so far. Fourth inning rolls in in game five. Indians coming up as they lead by one.
As we welcome you back to Game 5, the hottest, most dramatic show on television. Empire is all new Wednesdays on Fox. Trey Byers, Grace Byers, who star in the show, married in real life, here amongst the fans at Wrigley Field. Where the Cubs face elimination, the Indians face an opportunity to win their first world championship since 1948. First up, Kipnis takes a strike. Jason shows bunt. That is a fair ball. Great job by Ross as he pounced on that before it could roll foul. One away. And that's what the Indians have to do. That, that's exactly. But the problem is you want to bunt it out towards the mound. You want to make Lester feel this. Watch how it just dies right here. Just stays right there. And Ross knows he's got to get this quickly and it's an easy out. He is an extra leader that Joe Madden has out on the field with his team facing elimination here tonight. David Ross. With one out, nobody on. Here's Lindor. High fly ball into left. Coming to get it, Zobris. Two quick outs. And the batter will be Napoli. Beautiful shot of the great city of Chicago. And tonight's telecast is sponsored by Bud Light, Lady Gaga's new album, Joanne, available at Apple Music. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, downtown all lit up, John, and tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. I'm going to get in one of those one of these days. Here is Napoli hooking it foul down the line. Well, Lester's doing everything you could want a starter to do in elimination. He's throwing strikes. He's getting easy outs. Yes, one ball left the yard. One run's not going to beat you. That's what you got to tell yourself. And certainly, you're making a statement for your ball club to say, I'm on. All we've got to do is get on the scoreboard, and we will win. And strike two. Each side has only one hit, but the Indians made it count with a Jose Ramirez two out solo shot in the second. Ryan Rizzo and Zobris coming up for Chicago at the bottom of this fourth. Napoli hit a ball here yesterday that would have been in the street. No doubt. Absolute moonshot. He himself couldn't believe that, that ball stayed in the ballpark. Two and two. Establishing in. I wonder if we go cut her in and try to get under the barrel. Napoli likes the ball down. Let's see where David Ross goes on 3 2 count. The back away. Will that stay in play? Rizzo and Ross. It's Ross. Inning over. <laughs> He's right in the middle of it all. Ross gets this one. No assists. Bottom of the fourth, one to nothing. Cleveland.
Welcome back to the World Series on Fox. Tonight's telecast is presented by T-Mobile One. First pitch is up and away, a ball to Chris Bryant. Struck out his first time. You would never say this in a regular season game, in the fourth inning of a one nothing deficit, but the Cubs have to score here. They have to make something happen with 2-3-4. You start adding the innings, you start looking in the bullpen, and when you're up against it, the Cubs know that those guys are a moment away from getting in. You've got to put something on the board right here. his first RBI in this World Series. And this place is shaking. Rizzo. High fly into right. Back at the wall. Into the Ivy. Rizzo digging for two. Double. change he finally got a mistake middle in you see the exit velocity and the momentum that's all the Chicago Cubs have been waiting for and looking for they don't care if it's one foot over the basket or in the street he thought he had it right there well, he was obviously looking at it and then really had to turn it on not running out of the box the throw into second was wide however by Geyer and that allowed Rizzo to coast into second with a double. Uh, here's the second area that the Cubs have to be better at. You see the reactions. They have to get this runner over to third base. They have not done this well in the series. Zobris has flown out a couple times to left field. I would almost guarantee he rolls over and gets this, if nothing else, if not a hit, Rizzo to third base. Coming into this inning, dating back to Cleveland, the Cubs had scored just two runs over the last 25 innings. Both by Fowler last night, one on his home run, and then bang, bang, home run Bryant, double Rizzo. Nobody out, and Zobrist up. Tired of sitting. They have been sitting most of the two games. They know what's at stake. It's only the second time those two have had back-to-back -back hits this entire postseason. I mean, they're MVPs for a reason in the regular season. They carried this ball club. And there's no better time to get hot would be right now. The only other time, game two, back in Cleveland of this World Series. 3-0 pitch now. That's a base hit to right. Stopping at third is Rizzo. First and third, nobody else. Well, he 
definitely did his job. It was almost a guarantee he was going to get the ball to that side of the infield because it was hit so firmly and in the air. Rizzo had to hold up. But now, here's what the Cubs are looking for. Something out of the back end of this lineup. Russell now, who has a hit. Hayward, who's really struggled, has one RBI the entire postseason. And Baez, who's swinging at everything. So the Cubs need somebody else to step up here in this fourth inning, which was the same inning, the fourth of game four of the NLCS against the Dodgers down two games to one after they were shut out twice when the Cubs got off the mat and ended up winning that game 10 2. Well, that meeting at the mound was to discuss a bunch scenario first and third nobody out a perfect place for a safety squeeze and if nothing else you get the runner to second Cubs have done this a lot in the regular season a strike on the outside corner on a good pitch from Bauer curveball catch in the corner Russell doesn't care about that one. Those are the ones he's not going to hit. He's looking in one area, and if he paints three of them like that, well, so be it. Here's the bunt, and it's foul. And that's the play. You've got to just get it fair. It does not have to be good. They've done this during the year, a perfect scenario. And now he's going to have to battle with two strikes. You don't even care if he hits into a double play right here now after he doesn't get this down. But Rizzo reads it. It's you can't defense it. You cannot have any defense against it. But now the count 0 and 2. Right hander is getting ready. Mike Clevenger for the Indians out in their bullpen with Bauer in trouble here in the fourth. Bauer needs a strikeout. Good block by Perez. The Cubs have gone homer, double, single. And Russell, who singled up the middle, is behind on the count. And here's this group and how they've struggled in this World Series. The Cubs looking for something out of one of them. Left side, here comes Rizzo. No play at the plate, everybody's safe. Two to one, Cubs on top. These are the little things, just put it in play, even if it's a double play. It ends up being a great scenario and a base hit. The Cubs struck out too many times in this series, haven't put pressure on the Indians. If you make contact, you never know what's going to happen. And in this case, now first and second, nobody out. And Hayward, even though he hasn't bunted much, in a bunting situation. Well, we'll see how Joe Madden wants to play it. First and second, nobody out. Hayward struck out looking his first time. Catch up to the high heat. Four for 36 this postseason. Two for eight in the World Series. Only one RBI since the Division Series started. Now, the reason you don't like him or may not want him bunting is because Baez has expanded the strike zone and runners on second and third. Not a great matchup for contact. So Joe's going to take his chances swinging the bat. Bauer tried to climb the ladder. Hayward. No chance to swing at that one ball one strike but I'm telling you in this game and especially at this time of the year the more pressure you can put I, I just love the bunt I love the bunt when they're second and third you don't have to score via hit but I can understand why Joe's choosing to swing here because of the man on deck struggling to put it in play Hayward key spot 94 Hayward's had a tough time catching up the fastballs in the postseason now in the hole one and two. 
So now Bowers trying to limit the damage. He has struck out five tonight. But the first four have reached for the Cubs here in the fourth who lead by one. Back here. Bauer would love to climb the ladder, but you bring in the mistake factor on the fastball up. That's one thing that Hayward can handle. If you trust your breaking ball and you know you can get it down, that's the pitch you throw right here. The room for error up is a lot less with a fastball against a guy like Hayward. Been nine straight fastballs to Jason Hayward and Trevor Bauer. No. Uh, check swing, he went. Strikeout for out number one. And that's the pitch you got to make, and he made it. After going up and taking your chances with the fastball, reading the swing, Perez, great job enticing it down. It was almost an impossible for Hayward to stay off of thinking fastball. Getting curveball. Great pitch by Bauer. And now Baez. So Hayward has struck out twice. Baez struck out on a pitch that bounced in there back in the second. Runners at first and second. One out now as Hayward does not advance the runners. Runners on just one for 14 is Baez. And this postseason, as Baez has gone, so have the Cubs. 367 in their eight wins, that's his average. 160 in their six losses. And all of his RBIs have come in Cub victories. A point could not have been better. Bases loaded, one out. Perfection. It leaves it in the lap of David Ross. Typically, you say drive him in yourself with one out, but in this instance, the way Baez has been going, I think the bunt makes sense. Absolutely. And you always should bunt for a base hit. Even the people who don't like the bunt will tell you that. When you're struggling and they're going to expand the strike zone, all of a sudden now it's a lot simpler task. Put the ball with the infielder back at third base and you pass the baton on to the next guy. That's the theme of the postseason. You don't have to be the hero right there. But he puts it on David Ross, who is a double play ball candidate, but also somebody who has had good at bats this postseason. While going three for 15, he does have one home run and two RBIs. This would be an interesting pitch choice because your tendency would say to go to the curveball, but the curveball is an easier pitch to lock for a fly ball. Bases loaded, one out. Pinched in on the corners of the infield and strike one on Ross. David Ross is 0 for 7 with runners on this postseason. A little different story this round as opposed to the first two for the Cubs with a sack jam. The 0 1. <laughs> Terry Francona trying to help guide Trevor Bauer through this fourth. 
Same for the catcher Roberto Perez. Ross will sell out for a fastball so Perez and Bauer trying to guess here in the one one count. Strike two. Ninety four up around the belt a ball and two strikes. Seventh man to bat in the inning on deck is the pitcher Lester. Ross trying to get the job done before the lefty comes to the plate. Two and two. to the fastball so far so Ross has seen enough enough of them wonder if he can catch up if he sees a fifth one Ross spoiled it and that is a fifth one at 95 up and away. are going back and forth between Perez trying to decide when and if to deviate from the fastball. You see more fastballs and you start feeling better about getting and catching up to one and he went in instead of away almost doing Ross a favor. And he did his job. That's what you got to do. Now Lester he can swing it. He had six hits during the regular season. Trevor Bauer is allowed three runs in the inning and this is the eighth man to bat. Five hits and the inning started with a Bryant home run. Lester will come out of his shoes in this swing if it's a first pitch fastball. Oh, it can't be in there though. It's got to be out over the plate. Tough to come out of your shoes on a pitch in, but this is a perfect scenario for a pitcher. He's got nothing to lose. His team gave him the lead. Set this crowd into a different level of volume if he were to get a hit. 0 for 6 this postseason. Six RBIs during the regular season. Good swing by Lester. See if I'm facing a pitcher and he gives me that swing one could think oh did I beat him did he barely get a hold of it. And I go right to the breaking ball. Don't give him any feeling of confidence that another one's coming. That's 
what Bauer wanted, but Perez wants fastball. Strike two. Cleveland will have Santana, the left fielder, then Jose Ramirez, who's homered tonight. The only Cleveland hit, and then Brandon Geyer in the fifth against the guy at the plate. This will be pitch number 74 for Bauer coming to Lester. Gets it done with Bryant, Rizzo, Zobrist. Up by two after four in game five. Back after this from your local Fox station. Pitch, hit, and run is Major League Baseball's free skills competition for boys and girls aged 7 to 14. Sign up now to host a free competition in your local community at pitchhitrun.com. Can I just tell you something I've never gotten over as a kid? Sure. Punt pass and kick. <laughs> me either. I'm in, I'm in the same boat. 1 100. Oh, really? Cost me going to Silverdome. Anyways, I have to get that off my chest. Okay, thanks. Here's the 0-1 to Santana <laughs> outside. One ball, one strike. I was good at it because it didn't involve any running. <laughs> Santana, Ramirez, and Geyer, five, six, and seven hitters against Lester, who now leads by two. Santana went deep last night. That was batting left-handed. He's 
more powerful from that side. Now he's in the hole here one and two. Well we are always taught to go strike one to make these things work by our pitching coach Leo Mazzoni. And in this series that has been the case for the Indians. If the Cubs go strike one they got him hitting 141. If not they're hitting 364 on a 1 0 count. That's into the gap in right center field. This ball is down. Santana's got a double to start this inning. And here comes Cleveland. He can just flat out hit. Typically, the DH playing left field for the second time in three games to get his bat in the lineup last night at first, and he doubles here to start the fifth. Good high ball hitter, and he splits the gap. And he's able to get his team and a chance to score or get one back of the three they gave up. Ramirez do what he can to get a base hit or move him over to third. Same scenario. This will be John Lester's first pitch from the stretch tonight. See Ramirez and what he accomplished with that home run back in the second for what's the only run so far for Cleveland. And in a perfect world for Lester you're either Jamming him with cutters or slow curveballs to get him to try and pull the ball to the left side of the infield. Ramirez okay. takes ball two. After Ramirez, you're getting into the bottom of the lineup for Cleveland. They'll be asking for something out of the bottom end of their group before the end of this fifth. Here comes a 2-0. away with that cutter he left it up over the plate Ross wanted it in see where he wanted it and that ball just spins up in the middle of the plate two one three and one with Brandon Geyer on deck see what that home run did is Got David Ross and Lester maybe a little leery of going back in there. He hit a low pitch in for a home run to get the Indians jump started. Off the end of the bat, Santana to third. Russell got him, and it took a good play for out number one. A dig by Rizzo on the other end. Ramirez advances the runner. What a great play by Rizzo again on the short hop, but Ramirez gets down there pretty quickly. I know this ball wasn't hit very hard. You can tell Russell just trying to get rid of it as quickly as he can. Rizzo with another good save. So now a runner at third with one out for Brandon Geyer. Who was robbed of an extra base hit on a diving stop by Chris Bryant back in the second, and he's been red hot, Geyer. Hitting 390 since the 7th of September. Over 21 games. Former Tampa Bay Ray waits. Runner at third, one out. Ball one. You got the catcher on deck and Roberto Perez in the pitcher spot, but Terry Francona wouldn't hesitate to send in a pinch hitter. One oh pitch. <laughs> High strike. This guy are on an 0 2 pitch. Got an RBI by a hit batsman. Lester throwing a cutter hit his back knee. Strike two and you know Lester's thinking about a strikeout. He hasn't had one since he struck out the side in the first.
two and two. That pitch was so good, even though it was a ball, there's nothing Geyer could do, so he took it, just hoping. And it is a ball. But you expanded the zone in his eyes with Geyer. A 3 2 breaking ball. He's gone out with those pitches. Still thinking about getting the strikeout. Oh, with a 3 2 cutter instead, trying to get a look out there and then backdoor that pitch for. Possibly called strike three, and Geyer went out and got it. Good swing by Geyer. Picked up in season. Front office has done such a good job for this Indians team. Mike Chernoff, the general manager in his first year in that position. Chris Antonetti, president of baseball operations, former GM. Paul Dolan, the owner. Signed off on the deal to get Andrew Miller and these in season pickups, and here they are. In the World Series up three games to one, trailing tonight three to one, and out to the mound goes Ross. Reminder to switch over to FS1 after the game, post game coverage with Kevin and Alex, the big hurt, and the hit king. That wasn't a scenario where Lester goes, this is what I want to do. There were some suggestions made, and at the end they said, okay, so you've got to be committed, totally committed as a pitcher. If your catcher thinks something and you believe that it's the right pitch, then you can stay committed with it and no second th thoughts whatsoever. Another 3-2. Another foul ball. Everything this at bat, with the exception of early on breaking ball, has been hard. He got to two strikes. He tried to expand the zone away, away, away. They wanted to come cutter in there. Dyer has done a nice job fighting those pitches off. The Hawk, Andre Dawson watching. Hood on. 3 2 pitch. Geyer. Strikes it. This time he got the benefit of it. Pretty much what we saw on the 2 2 counter, the 1 2 count, but Geyer can't blame him. Well, here comes Chris Bazio. You've got the number eight hitter, and Roberto Perez with a runner at third, two out. The pitcher spot is next, but Trevor Bauer is not going to hit. And you would deal with Coco Crisp, who's been good coming off the bench. In the previous two games, he's already in the on deck circle. There's Coco. Look ahead if there is a game six. Tuesday, we'll be back in Cleveland. Coverage begins with the pregame show at 7 Eastern on FS1, then it's game six at 7 30 Eastern on Fox or watch it all live on Fox Sports Go. Jake Arietta, winner in game two, would take on Josh Tomlin. Well, you know Arietta's dying the pitch, right? But there's another guy that's dying to play. Schwarber. He wants that DH spot back. There's Jake. And here's Roberto Perez tying run at the plate. Two out. Ground ball to short. Russell. What a job by Lester. 
gets around a leadoff double and maintains a 3-1 to lead halfway through game five. T-Mobile One, welcome to Unlimited Baseball. One of the rooftops across the street, and that's the view from it. Down the right field line, across Sheffield. And inside, this place has been buzzing. It was buzzing the last two nights, but the Indians took command tonight. Cubs with a three run fourth inning and they've knocked out the starter Trevor Bauer. Here's Mike Clevenger. AT&T called the bullpen. And he gets it right past the bat of Dexter Fowler to start the fifth. He does have a live arm. He's gone to that seems to be new fad kind of abbreviated wind up where it looks like he's just pitching out the stretch. Takes a little step and goes. That's in the air to left. Santana. So far, he has handled himself extremely well out and left. Never had started there in any big league game before game three. Our game summary is sponsored by Bud Light. It was a solo shot by Jose Ramirez in the second that put Cleveland on top. Then Chris Bryant tied it. Cubs came up with three runs on five hits in the fourth. John Lester pitching brilliantly got around a leadoff double in the top of this inning. Now the MVP chance are back for Chris Bryant who homered to tie it last inning. Well he needed that he's only seen probably less than 20 percent fastballs. He finally got one he could hit. Because the formula is just breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball. Lull him to sleep, get him off his game, and it's worked. Joe Madden talked about 
the need to get to the quote unquote underbelly of the Cleveland bullpen because the big guns have been almost untouchable Shaw Allen and Andrew Miller but this is Clevenger and he's behind on the count here three and one. Rizzo waits to hit next. Three one. A walk. Statcast is powered by Amazon Web Services. Back in the fourth. The home run. 105 miles an hour through the teeth of the wind. 382 feet. Projected distance. It was followed by Rizzo. See what they did last inning compared to the first 21 innings at Wrigley in this World Series. Rizzo hit a ball he thought was gone and hit high into the Ivy and right. He turned it into a double, later scored on an infield hit by Addison Russell. One on, one out. The lead is two for Chicago. Off the end of the bat, late break, but there in plenty of time is Davis two out. Rajay almost stumbled with that initial jab step, but his speed allowed him to get to that without any issue. Two out. Yeah, great closing speed. If you play center field, Wrigley Field, you got to deal with the wind. He was reacting off the swing of the bat for a guy with a lot of power, and the ball just did not react off the bat like he thought. Now Zobrist, who's got seven hits in this World Series, more than he had in the first two rounds combined. He had six. Had a hit last inning. What? Takes the ball. His front leg when Clevenger comes to stretch, he gets it bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. He's going to have to come to a, a stop. He bounce, 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 and he's got to come to a stop. And that's what I was going to suggest. Brian, Brian looked like he was going to go. You could almost time that when he's bounce, 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 take off. Should be a time to run too. Yeah, he, Brian wanted to go. He, he just. He just missed one second of a timing before he felt comfortable to just keep going. Try to get into scoring position with two out for Zobras. There he goes. Pitch was high. Throw is into center. And Brian will continue on to third with two out. Stolen base and an error on Roberto Perez, the catcher. This game, Yogi Berra said it best, but this game really is mental. This game has so many components that can lock you up or free you up. Ozobris was swinging on 3 0 last inning and got a hit. He takes one over the inside corner here. It's 3 1. See, at some point in every series, all the way back to the first one, elimination game coming until three run rally, actually four, against the Giants. Here is a 3 1. Zobris takes a strike against the Dodgers, down 2 1, and virtually offense dormant. They got going, went on to win that series. Now more dire straits, 3 1. Their first lead since game two. Puts runners on at the corners with two out. And we'll give it to Addison Russell. 
Yeah, you're talking about the division series when they rallied to avoid having to come back for an elimination game against the Giants and Johnny Cueto. And then they put it together. It started with a bunt hit by Zobrist in the fourth inning of game number four in the NLCS. And the Cubs never looked back after that. Now tonight they're riding him. Leading by two, a chance for more. Hard hit, but right at Geyer to end the inning. Two walks, two left. Comes at left five. We played five. Game five. Chicago up by two. Bell, steal a base, steal a taco, only a Taco Bell. And by Verizon, join a better network because better matters. Official caps, t shirts, hoodies, jerseys, jackets, and more. Get all your Indians and Cubs World Series gear and celebrate your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Sixth inning arrives, three to one, Chicago on top. Pinch hitter is Coco Crisp. He is two for his last two, and they've been big ones. Last night, he delivered a pinch hit double, scored a run the night before, the only RBI of game three. And a one to nothing Indians win. One ball, one strike from Lester. Lester fastball command has been really good. Only a couple times has he forced action ahead with two strikes and built in a three ball count when he didn't need to. But he's getting ahead early, he's been aggressive. Good pitch in on the hands of Chris for strike two. This to me is the key. The first pitch strikes. You have to be aggressive against the Cleveland Indians. They really prefer hitting off speeds, at least as a whole on a team. Fastball, you've got your command. You can beat them. One mistake, really not even a mistake. It was just a homer, a better swing. That pitch cast powered by MLB Advanced Media. Count still one and two on Chris. The Indians still in play for making 
Lester feel something if they can get a leadoff guy on that can run. Well, John Lester. 11 and 2 here at Wrigley Field this year with an ERA of 1.61 coming in. And in 12 of his 17 home starts, he's allowed no runs or one run. Home dominance for Lester. And the Cubs need every bit of that here tonight. 1 2 pitch. 2 2. Well, the reason he's dominated this year, John Lester owns the inside part of the plate to a right hand. But he has been so good this year getting the ball away. So that opens up the plate. Left side, Bryant. One away. Crisp is retired, and Lester gets the lead man in the sixth. Tonight's T-Mobile one in-game box score for Cleveland. Just two hits, a double for Santana. That came leading off the fifth. Lester pitched around it. And a solo home run for Jose Ramirez that he blasted into the bleachers in left back in the second. And that's all. Here's Rajay Davis. You gotta be aware of the bunt. So far he has struck out, lined out. Shows Bunt takes a strike. Bryant and Rizzo know what they need to do when there's a bunt, and it really does cause them to crash. Baez, however, has got to come a long way if it's pushed in an area where Rizzo's got to get it. And with the speed of Davis, he's almost in a position where he couldn't get there. That's right. A lot of people have shown it in the playoffs. Very few have been successful. Making Lester field the ball. Here comes a 1 1 pitch. That's into left field, and Davis is on with one out in the sixth. Just his second hit of this World Series. What will that lead to? I mean, it doesn't matter to me. It, it, he has to steal. It doesn't even matter if he gets thrown out. Kipnis is coming up. That's a heater down there, warming up the hands, then warming up the bat on this cold night at Wrigley. But we've talked about it throughout this postseason. John Lester does not throw to first. And if there's a time to pitch out, it's right now. If you think he's going, that's a huge lead. You pitch out. He was. He just didn't get the real jump that guys get out there and they get uncomfortable. You would never get that kind of lead against a traditional pitcher. So shorten it up one step and go on first movement. Lester has done a great job in being quick to home, varying his times. There he goes. No throw. Stolen base, Davis. There's just no way to stop it if you do and execute. And as soon as he moves, You've got to go. So up until this point, Lester has created less stress by the solo home run, which is part of the deal. And then Ross, Ross has to be so fast, you expect more of that right there. Because it has to be a transfer that's so clean and quick. Here's a 1-1 now to Kipnis. Good swing. He'd like to have it back. In the hole now, one and two. That, by the way, just the second stolen base by Cleveland in this World Series. They led the American League with 134 steals during the regular season. And that, John Lester's been so good, but it's been the stolen bases that have led to runs. And that stolen base that you mentioned before that led to the run in the first inning, actually two runs. That was in game one. Wanted it, didn't get the call. Yeah, that was a great pitch. We're going to see where this ends up. But this is a front door cutter. Started at him, 
And then look where it ends up. Does it go around the box? Tell the intensity of this game so important to John and the Cubs. Even with the lead, Ross doing a nice job right here. Just giving them a 20-second timeout. Well, last night, Lackey was upset with the home plate umpire, Marvin Hudson. Didn't get a call. Trouble followed. And now Ross goes out to try to calm down Lester after not getting that pitch. After the stolen base now, you know, ifs, ifs, and ifs. But if a right-hander was at the plate here, you would see Davis steal third. Because he would have third. It's a lot harder for Ross to throw around the right-handed hitter than it is the left-handed hitter will open lane to get to Bryant. Here comes a 2-2, and now Kipnis steps up. Not only does John Lester not throw to first, he's not going to throw to second. But the one thing he can do is a spin move without it being a ball, even if he doesn't throw it. That's on the corner, struck him out. Good pitch. That followed the visit by Ross after Lester didn't get that one two pitch for strike three. Lester now steps off and looks back at Rajay Davis, who is basically daring John Lester to just step off, turn, and throw. And that's what you got to do, right? I mean, you've got to create that. Baez is saying, throw it anywhere back here, I'll catch it. <laughs> Batter now is Lindor. Two out in the inning. And there's that look. So that's 15 or 20 seconds that Davis has taken away from Lindor, their best hitter. Ball one down and in, and Ross is going to go out there and shout something out to Lester and, and this is the hard part I mean if you make your pitches you don't care if he steals third because there's two outs but as a pitcher as trained as he is you don't want him to just walk to third and he's having an effect on Lester that Lester did not want to have trying to face Lindor. Ties up Lindor with strike one. Strike two. And now the crowd to its feet. with two out. And now Lindor in a spot to run. He must. Again, high fastball. He gets on top. That's a tremendous flat bat through the zone. That's just short and quick. That's trying not to do too much. That's how you hit 300. Brings in again a pitch out, first pitch. Napoli now at the plate. Breaking ball in for a strike.
Tying run on at first with two out. Big two out RBI by Lindor. Francisco Lindor came into this game with seven multi hit games in his first postseason. That is the most ever by a player 22 years old or younger. You have to go. There he goes. Throw by Ross is in time in and over. David Ross ends the top of the sixth. with a tag on a perfect throw by the veteran catcher. It's a one run game. deck is Jason Hayward will lead it off. Hayward is struck out twice. Baez is struck out once and delivered a big punt hit. That led to what is now the difference in the game. The third run that scored in the fourth. Brian Shaw takes over. Shaw's been tremendous this postseason. Delivers a strike to Hayward. Shaw, everything he throws basically cuts. And I was saying earlier, it doesn't matter if you get thrown out because that is a percentage play that 90% of the time you're going to be successful because Lester has a hard time holding runners. You've got to create as much stress as possible. It took a perfect throw and a perfect tag to get Lindor. AT&T call to the bullpen. Upstairs for ball two. Second out of the pen for Terry Francona after Bauer went four. Allowed three runs on six hits, a scoreless inning put up by Clevenger. Pitched around two walks. Hayward can't catch up. Two and two. Most people 
don't teach what Baez does. And most people who cover the bag, Lindor would have been safe because they waited the bag for the guy to come in and tag. And we're going to show you why Baez goes beyond. Right there. Struck him out. That's three strikeouts for Hayward. So here's the play we're talking about. He comes in, makes the distance of the throw shorter. He comes in, slides, and he's so good at tagging, he cuts the distance. He tags him so far in front that there's no chance that Lindor can be safe. If he waits, Lindor's probably going to be safe with the slide. He can make all these late movements with his hand. But this is not just something that Baez is lucky at. This is something he's great at. It's his dominant hand. It's his left hand. He writes with his left hand. And it's easy to tag, he said, the way that he does. Boy, Shaw has come out of the bullpen, bringing good stuff with him, strike one. By the way, David Ross now has thrown out four of nine this postseason, potential base stealers. That is, that's a big lift for John Lester, who he catches. That is foul, right side, strike two. Ross next, his sack fly is the difference in the game back in the fourth. Your chances of getting three, four hits in a row off of Lester are not great. So if you can get two hits with runners in scoring position, you got a better chance. And that's what they did earlier to get back in this game. It was worth every effort to get that stolen base and create havoc for him at second, which you know Davis did at some point. Didn't chase it this time. Baez with one out after Hayward struck no, no, no. out in that three run fourth drop down a perfect bunt yeah. to load the bases and it paid off because David Ross delivered with a sack fly into left another bad ball in the dirt another strikeout for Baez two out. And for Baez, here's the here's the whole package. I mean, not only can he play defense, watch these tags. I'm not, I don't even know where you're at. I'm gonna swipe it, swap. I'm gonna swipe it and get it. He has such a unique ability to take it wherever the throw is, and sometimes maybe even jam that wrist, as you saw there. But it is an innate ability that we have heard about for a long time, and we have gotten to see at the biggest stage why this guy's great. And Davis telling him you got to just go well, this is interesting with David Ross the scheduled hitter Miguel Montero is going to come off the bench here with two out Carl Edwards Jr. is getting ready out in the bullpen for Chicago unless there's an injury with regard to David Ross that would tell you that Lester's coming out of the game. I mean he's definitely coming out of the game if the next guy if Montero gets on. So he is finished after six it appears although that move does not need to be made now. Joe Madden is going to go to his pen. Which is interesting because Napoli is the first batter, right handed. But then Carlos Santana, the left handed, or rather left fielder, switch hitter, much better batting left handed, which is how he would hit against Edwards if he faces him. Either way, it's shaping up to be a classic. Must win for Chicago. One run lead. Two out and an 0-2 pitch. A strikeout as Shaw strikes out the side. And the inning comes to a close. Let's go to the seventh inning of game five. Cubs lead it by one. Back after this from your local Fox station.
Well there's a lot going on here in the seventh inning. Those two veterans such good friends battery mates David Ross and John Lester a hug 90 pitches tonight. Six innings he allows two runs on four hits struck out five walked nobody and allowed a home run. But there's so much to this Carl Edwards takes over. Seventh game of the postseason. And the first pitch to the new catcher Wilson Contreras is outside ball one with Napoli at the plate. Joe Madden not only has Edwards in the game he's got a rolled as Chapman getting loose in the bullpen. Napoli was trying to tie it. So the question will be for Joe Madden if this doesn't work as Chapman throws that weighted ball down to the bullpen. Did you pull Lester too soon. A one run game however and Lester having a tough time keeping runners close. Here's one in the left. This ball is. Down, Zobris cuts it off. Napoli will hold it second with a single. Zobris did a good job to avoid an extra base hit by Mike Napoli. Yeah, that was a good job by Zobris. You, you almost figured that they might have pinch run for Napoli if he got to second base. But he hooks this in the corner and Zobris gets it in quickly. So I'll ask you as Chris Bazio comes out Carlos Santana the switch hitting left fielder typical DH digging in you go to the 25 year old right hander you pull John Lester the 32 year old vet this is why you get Lester before the game Joe Madden telling us unless Lester's awful he's the best I've got getting the ball to a roll to Chapman but here in what is now a one run game. He's lifted him in the seventh inning. Yeah, but I think you said it. I think with a one run lead and anybody gets on, there is trouble for John Lester. And so in this scenario, I think Edwards, in the way that he cuts his fastball, doesn't scare Joe as much against left handers the way he rides it and he throws that curveball. So, simply put, I think that's the biggest thing that Joe's going to say afterwards. He gave us what we needed. We need to get one inning and then we're turning it over to Chapman. And it may not even be a full inning. Chapman's getting ready right now. One run lead Chicago in game five down three games to one. Here's Santana. Takes inside from Edwards. Santana hit a line drive laser home run into right field last night hitting left handed. There's the shift on Santana. It's Bryant on the other side of the infield. Russell on the left side. Breaking ball in for a strike to Carlos Santana. We're in the seventh, and Chapman is getting ready. You hear Joe Madden say ground ball right to KB. That's what he's hoping for. That's Chris Bryant. Contreras blocks ball two. Well, with the Cubs facing elimination, as we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, Joe and John, uh, the wheels are spinning to say the least here in the seventh. The only people that are not having fun are the ones that can't do anything about it. When you're in this game, you you'd rather be in this game than sitting and watching. Joe Madden, Terry Fran Francona, both going to be doing a lot here in the next few innings. Chased it two and two. Santana. Just got a piece. Wow. <laughs> that is a firm fastball and a just missed swing. There's the cutting action and luckily off the side. Another 2 2 pitch. That gets. 
Bounce away from Contreras in the tying run down to second with nobody out. That may be a pass ball. They already say wild pitch, but that could have gone either way. Sure looked like he crossed him up. I don't know what, what went wrong there for Contreras. Oh, the ball just went the other way. He was expecting it to cut in, and the ball absolutely went the other way. So you're expecting this ball, as we said, the cutter fastball does the opposite. Again, that could have been a pass ball. And they just changed it to a pass ball. Now the tying run at second with nobody out and a 3-2 count on Santana. Fly ball into left. Zobris broke in, now goes back, has it, and Napoli holds its second one out. <laughs> Joe Madden, before that ball was caught, was almost headed out of the dugout. He told us before the game, if I get Chapman up, He's coming in. Him up and then sitting down and getting up again, not a good thing. And with one out here in the seventh, it's time for the closer. A roll to Chapman on a cold night at Wrigley in the seventh. Weekend's World Series and NFL action. And discuss all my correct predictions. Now that would be an upset. Undisputed, weekdays 9.30 Eastern, FS1. Well, here we go. Roll this Chapman into the game in the seventh. Tying run at second, one out. And Jose Ramirez, who has had good swings all series. The switch hitting third baseman stands in. He homered back in the second. That was against Lester. Napoli the runner. Strike one. Pat is just trying to cheat on 102 or 101 mile an hour fastball and he threw him a slider. That's trying to get started in the slider. Which Chapman has thrown a lot more of in the last outing or two. Most improved hitters in the game, Jose Ramirez. Looks at 101. 
This is going to be a long night for Chapman. Yes, it is, but if it's a fruitful one, he's got a day off to get to Cleveland. Here comes a 1 1. That's been a problem. Inherited runners for Chapman, who inherits the tying run at second here in the seventh. statistic they almost need to do that to inherited runners without getting it out he came in with the bases loaded nobody out struck out two guys and then gave up a couple of those in what was really an impossible situation against the Dodgers Gonzalez got him for a single up the middle Well, here's that first pitch. He's thinking that's going to be a fastball, and then afterwards, it's nothing but fastballs. And they were electric. This is so hard to do and so hard to hit a guy who throws this firm and has such a big extension 6.53 or beyond extension, and then petrol, gasoline, Geyer almost hit, and he says he was. Must have caught him on the pant leg to send him to first. So hit by pitch and the go ahead run is on here in the seventh inning. Let's take a look. Just raise the thigh. Yep, left thigh. <laughs> You're going to get hit by 100. That's about the best way. Because otherwise, you square him up. That hurts. Well, how about Roberto Perez? He's hit two home runs, both coming in game one. He's hit three home runs this postseason. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Hitting under 200 for the postseason. Hit 183 during the regular year. Two on, two out, one run lead. Swing by Perez, but strike one. In case you're wondering, for Roldis Chapman, his longest outing out of the bullpen, two and a third innings. He's trying to go two and two thirds here tonight. It would be huge. Right now, it's Perez trying to tie it with a hit. Or give the Indians the lead back with an extra base hit. That first can run. That's Geyer, the lead runner at second. Napoli, not one of the faster guys in this game. And Contreras is summoned to the mound by Chapman. Well, Napoli will get that big secondary lead, and he's anticipating. As soon as he sees the swing and contact, he's going, with the exception of Hayward. I don't know if anybody would be able to throw him out at home plate unless it was a rocket, one hopper to Zobris. Fowler playing pretty deep.
If you're an infielder for the Cubs, remember, if you knock something down, you don't have to make a miracle play to throw throw them out at first. Just keep it in front of you. Getting alive. What a pick by Contreras. And that keeps the runners at first and second on one of the better plays we've seen by a catcher. I don't know how, with that velocity, he comes up with this. That's unbelievable. Two on, two out, one ball, one strike. To the second baseman, Baez. Chapman out of trouble. Time for the seventh inning stretch, and now we join public address announcer Andrew Bellison. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the legendary Eddie Vedder. Hey, Chicago. Look at this. Look at you. Wrigleyville is full. It's October 30th, and there's baseball at Wrigley Field for the first time in history. I know we want to thank Theo and Tom and Joe and the team for bringing the World Series to Wrigley Field 2016. And there's one guy in particular I want to sing my ass for, and he's number three. He's behind the plate. He may retire, but he'll never quit. Mr. David Ross, I'd like to belt this one out for you. It's his last game at Wrigley. Let's sing it for him. Let's sing it with Harry. Game number five moves into the bottom of the seventh inning. Wilson Contreras is first at bat of the night. 
Shaw back to work. Strike one. Strike two. Shaw struck out the side in the sixth. It'll be Contreras, then Fowler, then Bryant. The lights out closer for Cleveland getting loose. Cody Allen. Ball one. Well, that inning now. Crowd feeling better and. Chapman trying to find a way to get six more outs, as you called it. Eight in this case. Two and two. Left side, Lindor. On two hops. One down. Back to the top of the order. Back to the sky we go. Tonight's telecast sponsored by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. And tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. What a job done tonight by Brian Shaw. We're going to have a double switch here as Terry Francona is going to go to his closer. Cody Allen rested, ready to give outs. And a double switch here as Jan Gomes will take over behind the plate. Perez is out. Allen is in in a terrific game five. Welcome back to the World Series on Fox. Tonight's telecast is presented by T-Mobile One. Here's Cody Allen now taking over. Top of the order, Dexter Fowler. That got him on the foot and hurt. But it'll put a man on here in the seventh inning for Chicago. On 
this cold night. That caught him. It's that power breaking ball. You see the top of the foot. Like you said. Not a good feeling anyways, but when it's cold out, you've been standing out in center field. Top of, top of the foot. He's obviously a great base runner and is dying to stay in this game and play the outfield. But I don't know. Give him a look. And Joe Madden is going to go join in this conversation to find out if he needs to bring somebody off the bench. We'll give you the T Mobile One in game box score for the Cubs. But Fowler's just been hit by a pitch. Solo home run by Chris Bryant in the three run fourth inning got the action started for the Cubs. They went on. Scored two more after that. That's where they bunched their hits. Russell's had a nice night. Batting in the five spot. Here's the homer by Bryant to tie the game in the fourth. Then a double by Rizzo. Base hit by Zilbrist. RBI hit by Addison Russell that stayed on the infield. A bunt hit by Baez and a sack fly by David Ross, who was serenaded in one of the better seventh inning stretches I've ever seen out of Wrigley Field by the great Eddie Vedder. Yeah, absolutely. After all that, what do you do? Steal on the first pitch? Well, I mean, it <laughs> would be an unbelievable acting job. But Fowler's okay to continue. You know it hurts. One on, one out. Big hole on the right side of the infield. Bryant trying to ride one out of here. Told you Gomes took over behind the plate. Double switch, and that means that the pitcher is batting in the number eight spot. Gomes will lead off at the top of the eighth, batting ninth. These are just stupid numbers, by the way. I mean, as close as you could be to. What Kansas City and the model they had out of the pen. By the way, that's the first time Cody Allen has hit a batter all season long as he got Fowler, who's still showing the effects of that hit by pitch over at first as the count's gone to 0 and 2 on Bryant. Both closers in the game in the seventh. There he goes. Pitches high. Throw down. Too late. Bad foot. No bad foot. Stolen base. But he beat him. Collar, one of the few guys. Seems like everybody slides in head first these days. He goes in feet first. Easiest way to stay on the bag. They're going to hold the tag just in case. Typically. That's his first stolen base of the postseason. Count one and two on Bryant. That's strike three. Two out. High breaking ball, and that's what Bryant thought it was. High. I have a case. It'll bring in Rizzo. That's twice now Bryant's been rung up. Third strike. Rizzo's going to be walked here with Zobris coming up. First base open, two out. 
Both times Brian went back to the dugout shaking his head. The home plate umpire. Intentional pass here to Rizzo. Two out. The World Series is sponsored by Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Chevrolet has learned more 2016 JD Power Dependability Awards than any other brand. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. It'll be Zilbrist. Now Allen is a closer for the Cleveland Indians. Terry Francona does have Andrew Miller available tonight. They have to get to that. A little different story than for Joe Matt and the Cubs in their bullpen as they've used their best. Chapman already. Sobris usually doesn't like swinging at the first pitch, but he's not going to get a lot of fastballs. I would anticipate a lot of curveballs. So if he sees a fastball in the area, he should let it go. The power curveball is going to be the way to get Zobris out with your Cody Allen. All the while, a roll as Chapman's been sitting in the dugout or trying to stay loose underneath on this cold night. Two on, two out. Ball one. Good discipline there. Zobris doesn't mind getting deep in the count. He's been swinging a good bat, and he's definitely been swinging a good bat off the of fastballs. Ryan still shaking his head over that high breaking ball called strike three. 1 0. Oh. 2 0. Oh. And Russell on deck. I'll let it go, three and zero. Oh. Meaning, I'd let Zobra swing. He's done once in this game, and he does it again. This time, he comes up empty. Like Allen and Gomes, the battery were expecting that. Three balls and a strike. You see Schwarber getting a bat. That's with Hayward due up after Russell. The two out in the inning with runners at first and second. 3 1 pitch. Popped up out behind short and Lindor wants it. Has it. Cody Allen gets out of trouble in the seventh. Eighth inning rolls in. Nine, one, and two hitters coming up for the Indians who trail by one.
Game five, eighth inning. 3 2, Cubs on top. First pitch swinging is Jan Gomes, who is at the plate for the first time tonight. 0 for 1 in this postseason that came in this World Series. There's his regular year. Couldn't stay healthy. Bought his way back to the active roster in September. Here he is, trying to lead off the eighth with something. In the hole, 0 and 2. Chapman is asked to get eight outs tonight. He's got two so far. Pumping in fastballs. Saying good luck to you. Chapman with the slider here. Ties him up. Just so you know, for this season, regular and post, opponents have hit 151 against the Chapman fastball, 235 against the Chapman slider, and he just locked up Jan Gomes. I mean, I know it's nice to have a secondary pitch, but when they can't hit the first pitch, you don't really need a secondary pitch. Well, one inside to Davis. Sometimes he's going to give you a chance with that slider. If you can't catch up to the heater and it's in the wrong spot, does you a favor. A single, a steal, and a run scored by Davis in the sixth. Rajay takes high for ball two. If he can get on, he can use his speed. Chapman does not hold runners all that well either. Kipnis on deck. Ball three. got caught watching. You'll see right here as soon as he throws and he turns his back because that's the way he finishes. And it was way too late at that point. Davis could flat out fly. So the tying run is on, and how about Rajay Davis? Came in one for 23 in the postseason, was one for 25 before the sixth inning single and steal. He scored a run on the hit by Lindor. And now he's on. And there will be a lot of attention on Rajay Davis at first with one out. Yes, there will. Cleveland Indians are one of the few teams in baseball, as we've documented, they will steal bases. 134 regular season. Stolen bases. Davis is going to make it awfully difficult as he could and should for Chapman. Here's Kipnis. Jason 0 for 3 tonight. I just love this time of the year more than anything. I mean, I loved it when I was a player out there. Everything matters. Tension, crowd, every pitch is big. Of course, for the Cubs, it's magnified because they're down three games to one. But 
It just doesn't get any better than this right here. Davis didn't get a real good look at that move by Chapman. He takes a while to the plate. The difference for Chicago is it got Wilson Contreras behind the plate who can really throw it. And we've seen the tagging abilities by Javier Baez down at second. And Chapman calls timeout and wants a new baseball. It's just a much easier position for the Indians to be in up three games to one even though they're down one run in this game. They can afford to be a little more aggressive. They can afford to take chances. Put the heat continuously on the Cubs and hope for a mistake. Hope for a crack in the armor of the Cubs. But at this point it's all about Chapman being able to throw strikes. Finishing the job. Contreras is active behind the plate. He likes throwing behind the runner at first if he gets the chance. Kipnis. Ball one. That was pitch number 20. Season high in pitches for Chapman 36, career high 44. Last July. Cincinnati. And after that ball bounced over to first, the Indians were saying, check the ball. Joe West alerted the home plate umpire, Tony Randazzo. They got Chapman's attention. He threw the ball out. There he goes. No chance. Stolen base for Davis. And the tie run in scoring position here in the eighth. That's just a great job by Davis. Reading the move. Late kick for parallel. And he takes off. What a nice addition to this Cleveland team, Rajay Davis. Who led the American League in stolen bases at the age of 35, and he's got two big ones here tonight. Now the 2-0. Instead, Chapman steps off with Kipnis at the plate. Well, what he did at first base was bought the hitter Kipnis two pitches out of the zone. So now Kipnis a favorable 2-0 count. Davis stealing most of the attention of Chapman. And now Contreras will go out to talk, and Baez will come in. And according to Joe Madden, the Cubs manager, Baez has the ability in these little meetings to say the right thing to Chapman, get him to laugh, get him to lighten up. Back to his position he goes. Well, there's a couple ways to put a pickoff if you're a middle infielder. And of course, Baez is going to be the only one because Russell's playing on the opposite side, not thinking that Kipnis can pull the fastball of Chapman. You do daylight, or there's a pick play. And a pick play can come from the catcher or a sign from the infielder. Daylight is when he takes off to second, you turn and spin, trying to pick him off. Two and one on Kipnis. Kipnis made up his mind he was going to swing at a fastball. Such life on these pitches. Wilson Contreras glad to corral that.
pitches weren't even close. But you know, Kipnis is having a hard time not only reading Chapman's release point, but velocity. T-Mobile One lets MLB fans always stay connected to the game they love with unlimited LTE data. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. And welcome to heart pounding baseball here in the eighth. Oh, this crowd has been standing, pleading, hoping. Kipnis takes ball three. Where the other ones were outside. Witness held up. Popped up. Zobrist coming in. That one almost popped out. To make sure down the line and left, two out. Well, the hard part for Zobris was getting awfully close to the bullpen mound. You know, part of him was worried when he was going to hit that, and as he hits that with his foot, it just might have caused him to take his eye off the glove and the ball just a fraction. Hard play for a left fielder to come in with the wind blowing the way it was, and then hit a different surface right there. It's a foul ball for the out, and now it's Lindor with Napoli on deck. And Lindor has come up with one big hit after another for Cleveland. This 22-year-old star, an RBI single, was caught stealing in the sixth. He could tie this game with a two-out hit. The base is open. Mike Napoli is on deck, and that's why Bazio came out to talk. World Series. There's the tying run, two out, eighth inning. There goes Davis. And he just walks into third base with another steal. During that uh, visit, he had a conversation with the first base coach, and that was already discussed what was going to happen. He was going to take third and put the ultimate pressure on now Contreras at home plate. Here comes a 1-0 pitch. Tying run is 90 feet away. Strike one. And the one thing Lindor has going for him, he's quiet. And as long as he doesn't take a really big swing, he has a chance against Chapman. He went with the slider there. Short compact to the ball. Use the power of Chapman to your advantage. the importance of taking third base. Ajay Davis led the league with 13 steals of third during the regular season and anything that gets away from Contreras Davis will take off. And that was part of the game planning. Throwing sliders versus fastball early against Lindor.
Reliever of the Year awards were presented by the Hartford prior to yesterday's game. Zach Britton of the Orioles was named the Mariano Rivera American League Reliever of the Year, and Kenley Jansen of the Dodgers was named the Trevor Hoffman National League Reliever of the Year. Britton was 47 for 47 in save opportunities with a 0.54 ERA. Jansen, who wasn't here yesterday, as Russell takes a strike, also had 47 saves. Tied with Mark Melanson, four behind NL leader Juris Familia. And on top of all that, so good in the postseason. Congratulations to Zach and to Kenley. He'll one pitch from Allen to Russell. Strike two. Just so you keep it in the back of your mind in case something starts to happen for Chicago in the bottom of the eighth. Chapman is due up fourth. Cody Allen got around to hit batsman. Handed out an intentional pass last inning and got Zobrist on a pop up. Struck him out one away. Second strikeout for Allen. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by T Mobile One. Welcome to Unlimited Baseball. Don't forget after this game, go to FS1, sponsored by Lethal Weapon. Post game coverage. Kevin A Rod, the hit king, the big hurt. Here's Jason Hayward, who was struck out three times. Takes the ball inside. Well, you know, Jansen, you mentioned. Gonna be a free agent, I believe, and he pitched three innings in relief of Clayton Kershaw, only in a losing effort. Brent, so nasty, didn't get in the game. The wild card. One ball, one strike on Hayward. But Chapman will also be a free agent. Both Chapman and Jansen will probably command attention and dollars. One one. Hayward tried to check a swing and he did two and one. In the ninth inning, it'll be Napoli, Santana, and Ramirez. Three guys who are home run threats. 68 home runs between the first two hitters in the ninth. Third hitter homered earlier tonight. Two one. one. Three and one. Terry Francona basically has two closers. It's Cody Allen and Andrew Miller. So even in a one run deficit, he's asked Cody Allen to pitch a few innings. He hasn't had much action of late. With a day off tomorrow, he'll have his full complement of relievers ready if they need to play a game six. Oldest Chapman has thrown 30 pitches so far after coming into this game in the seventh. He set his career high 44 out of the bullpen. That's foul. But those other appearances weren't in game five of the World Series with his team facing elimination. No, they weren't. And certainly his previous experience is coming in with less room for error, at least tonight. One runner on, and he was able to get out of that. Might think about spinning a breaking ball here if you're Cody Allen. Hayward 
was getting too good of swings off the fastball for my liking, and they went with a 3-2 fastball, and they went away, and he was able to put a bullet past Kipnis. Now Javier Baez, one-on-one -on -one out. Again, it's Chapman, the next hitter. Fazio is going through Pedro's stroke to talk to Chapman. Up one, trying to steal another run. Using the formula and a late slide. Kind of an awkward slide as he tried to avoid the tag. But the ball gets by him. And then he lands on it. Uh. The reaction from Aroldis Chapman in the on-deck circle. He doesn't look too stressed down no, there. And now doesn't. Mickey Callaway, the pitching coach, is going to come out and talk. I mean, this is a pretty obvious situation of you don't have to throw by as a strike, even if he gets on first base, we're facing Chapman. So just be aggressive with your breaking balls, I would think, against a guy who's shown the inability to stay off of him. And then you can face Chapman, who I'm sure hasn't had a whole lot of time swinging the bat. Oh and one the count on Baez. It's a big run sitting out there for Chicago. That's a strike and it's nothing in two. Now don't throw it anywhere close to the strike zone. And Hayward be prepared if it's in the dirt. If you can read it and get an aggressive lead and anticipate the ball in the dirt. If it skips away a little bit, you can advance the third. I mean, the hardest part for Baez is to anticipate the ball up and not think it's going to be a fastball. But sometimes you just got to guess along with the pitcher when you're struggling on anything that moves. It's just not that easy until you learn. He will learn a lot. Having gone through this, I can promise you. We visited with Terry Francona, the manager of the Indians, before the game. He was talking about John Lester, who he managed in Boston. He said, I know this, the game's not going to be too big for Lester. And then he said, what, if we go back to Cleveland, it's Arietta. If there's a game six, and if there's a game seven, it's Hendricks. He said, their pitching still gives me anxiety. There's a one, two. Two and two. Joe Madden said, just get this thing back to Cleveland. He likes Arietta. Game six, we take on Josh Tomlin, who was so good here. Two nights ago on Tuesday night in Cleveland. Spin it, spin it. Break the ball. And struck him out. Another swing and miss from Javier Baez with a runner at second, two out. Here comes Chapman. That's a you execute without throwing a strike. There are certain guys when they walk into a clubhouse that just look different than the rest. And that's a role as Chapman for the Cubs, as Joe Madden said, he's like wrapped steel 
Well, he is as strong a baseball player as you'll find. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and a great athlete. He's not a guy that just throws 100. They ask him for a hit. Well, why? Also going to protect themselves right there if he swings late. Chapman did not bat for the Cubs this season during the regular year. The 1 0 pitch inside yeah. corner. He's got half of it down. He looks hitterish. He does. Good stance. Oh for one earlier in the season waiting for a one one and it's down two and one third career plate appearance for a role as Chapman he's 0 for two. Hayward stealing. Throw down is not in time. And the count's two and two on Chapman. Check to see if they want to challenge that call. And they don't. Hayward at third, two out. Cubs by one. A strikeout ends the inning and sends game five into the ninth. The three guys coming off Napoli, Santana Ramirez, combined one for seven. Their careers against Chapman. Let's go to the ninth.
Aroldis Chapman came on in the seventh with one out. He got out of the seventh, pitched a scoreless eighth. And tries to work a scoreless ninth to send the World Series back to Cleveland. Ball one to Mike Napoli. He's got to go through some thunder. Napoli and Santana. Back to back guys who each hit 34 home runs during the regular season. One run Cub lead in game five. Strike one. The last home run Aroldis Chapman allowed was June 18th of this year to Kurt Suzuki of the Twins. He has seen 201 batters since. And the Cubs are two outs away from their first World Series win at Wrigley since that 1945 postseason. Here's Santana. hit 34 home runs but 30 of those home runs came left handed during the regular season. Chapman's done a nice job. He hasn't been too inconsistent with his fastball early on mixing in a couple sliders but now sensing a normal ninth inning even though it's unnormal and the fact that this is the third time He's entered the game really seventh, eighth, and now the ninth. The 0 1 pitch. Ball one. Still in triple digits. As he has tied his season high for pitches. Still eight away from his career high. That's the hardest part of closing, really. You come in. And you know that's it. You get your job done. You don't really sit down. He sat down twice. Now having to get it the third time. Time called. strike Up right side. Hayward coming to get it. He says, stay away. Two out. <laughs> and the 
And the first man a roll as Chapman faced tonight, Jose Ramirez. Chapman hoping will be his last faced tonight. Quite a job it would be if that is the case. Ramirez struck out when he faced Chapman in the seventh. Strike one. I don't think with two strikes he saved his best fastball for last. If he gets the two strikes. Detroit October 8th it's the 30th of October 2016 struck him out that will be a game six comes one at three two July 25th from the Yankees. They gave four players to get the future free agent. final three innings what was it like out there it didn't feel like an elimination game I mean um, you know it's nice to have a big inning there and um, John doing his thing and then Chappie coming in for I don't know seven outs I mean that was a unbelievable win and hopefully can use that head into game six we're going back to Cleveland you've got Arietta on normal rest against Tomlin on short rest you've got Schwarber coming back how do you like your chances we feel good about it I mean uh, you know the reigning side young winner obviously he did well over there um, he's a bulldog man he'll go out there and give you his best effort every time and we always feel confident with him on the mound so hopefully he can win that game and you never know what happens in a game seven. Chris thank you very much. All right. Over to Tom Reducci. Anthony Rizzo you scored all your runs in the third inning. What was the tension like for the final six innings of this game to hold on. Oh, uh, high anxiety a lot of deep breaths uh, just. Every pitch is just gets bigger and bigger as the game goes on, and it's, it's unbelievable. Great, great win here uh, to send these fans off with a win. Uh, now we get to go back to Cleveland and uh, take care of business. 
I have to ask you about your good friend David Ross. He drove in what turned out to be the deciding run, threw out a runner at second base, caught John Lester for probably the final time. What are your thoughts about the man you call Grandpa Rossi? Uh, I mean, I love him. I love him like like a brother, like a dad, like a mentor. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, I don't know if everyone, I was, I was pretty emotional there, just seeing him with that big hit back, driving that run and throwing the guy out. Uh, we were he was talking before the game about, you know, this could be his last. And uh, we got the W, uh, sent him out with two more Ws. Hey, congratulations. We'll see you in Cleveland. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Back to you. All right, guys, thank you. The winning pitcher is Lester, now 1-1 one one in this World Series, 3-1 and one this postseason. The loser, Bauer. Trevor goes to 0-2, both losses in this World Series. And the save for Chapman, what a save. As he had to get the final eight defensive outs. Here's how it ended. His fourth save, a foul tip, hung on to by Contreras in a three hour 27 minute game awesome game awesome venue getting ready to go to another awesome venue in Cleveland they are excited they were hoping it might end tonight but they're going to get a game six in Cleveland it's going to be a lot of fun and I cannot wait nor can I nor can any of us wait to get back to Cleveland and continue this World Series between a team that hasn't won it all since 1948 and one that hasn't won it all since 1908. A two and two thirds innings pitched. Save for a roll this Chapman. Cubs win it 3 2. Kevin, guys, all yours. All right, Joe, welcome. Well, it's been 25,955 days since the Cubs last won a World Series game. That streak is now over. Frank Thomas, Pete Rose, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Kevin Burkhart. A lot to do on the post game tonight. We'll have interviews and reaction. More of that from Wrigley. The Cubs, of course, will hear from them and they extend their series and their season. It'll go back to Cleveland. Plus, Araldus Chapman delivering time. Alex said this would go back to Cleveland, and indeed we are. Maybe the Cubs got a little bit of a break tonight, too. And these fans, something to celebrate. It's been quiet in Wrigley, but not anymore. This is going to a game six in this World Series.